Suzanne McAllister with Vegan Spirituality Group of Philadelphia. And in honor of Kel's birthday and fundraiser, I'm happy to share a video that Kel and I made where he introduced me to the residents of his sanctuary, the Spiritual Haven Animal Sanctuary in Womolsdorf, Pennsylvania. Kel, thank you for the incredible care you take of these very, very fortunate uh, creatures. And happy birthday. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's January 15th, and uh, this is part two with Kel, um, upstairs, downstairs with Kel. I introduced you to um, Kel about 10 days ago. And Kel is the founder and um, caretaker of the Spiritual Haven Animal Sanctuary and also Kel's pet sitting. And he is in Wommelsdorf, Pennsylvania. How was that? Very good. I practiced. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in the first part, we um, uh, Kel explained how he um, became vegan, his journey, and then what led to him uh, starting this sanctuary. So you can go back to part one if you didn't have uh, an opportunity to hear that, and that's on YouTube. Um, it's also on Facebook and on our meetup, Vegan Spirituality Group of Pennsylvania, um, if you would like to hear that. And it's very moving um, how Kel started his journey and um, the things that transpired that encouraged him to begin this sanctuary. So where we left off was that um, Kel was going to take us either upstairs or downstairs to his sanctuary. So I'm gonna let you choose Kel, where you would like to start. Um, I guess we'll go downstairs. Okay. Main sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. And maybe as you're going downstairs, you can, um, well, you start. And if I have some questions, I'll ask you. Okay. Perfect. Yep, Great. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. And, and we're hoping the video will be good as Kel makes his way downstairs, but we'll see what happens. Now, as I, as I explained before, Susan, when I'm walking with the laptop facing away from me, I can't obviously see exactly where that's, where that's showing. So just let me know if I need to like, you know, total up or down or, you know, whatever. Sure. Okay. Okay. So we're heading down into the basement, which is where the main sanctuary is and the guys hear me coming so they're stirring okay they know, this is, they know this is not their typical eating time so i'm not coming down at this time very often so they know something's up okay and you said um, that you told them to be on good behavior right i have to well for what that's worth yes i <laughs> asked them to be on their best behavior put on their best clothes um and uh you know so we will we will see. Um, I'm guessing the majority went outside. That's where they go when they are startled. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll head out there in a minute. Let me just we'll go in here. Actually, okay. So tell me what we're looking at here. Well, let me just slowly walk over here and hopefully. Yeah, they're very nervous. Right here is two. We have joy. If you can see them. Yeah, so that's Joy. And who was the other one? Joy is the black one. I it would be on your left, I believe. Yeah. yeah. She's the very first uh kitty I ever trapped, ever when I started wow. doing the trap neuter release. And how so how long has she been with you? Uh since uh, uh yeah, they oh, there she goes. Okay. Yeah, they both took off. Um she uh she's been with me either like late 2012 early 2013. okay 
And yeah. she clearly has a buddy. Who was that? That I believe, I'm pretty sure that was uh, Red. That was okay. Red. Yeah. Yeah. He, how yeah, does that ahead. come about that they um, uh, choose who to be with? Like, does that take time? Does it happen automatically? Is it different for different cats? I would say it's different for different cats. It just seems some of them just kind of like warm up to certain other ones. I don't, I don't know if it's the way one smells or the mannerisms of one or whatever. Um, there are some that tend to be more aloof with everybody. You know, they're, they're doing fine here, but they, they don't really like, like, like huddle up like that, you know, uh, with other with other uh, residents, and then there's times where I'll come down and I'll see six of them piled on top of each other, you know, laying all over each other. You know, you wonder how, you wonder how the ones on the bottom can actually breathe. You know, wow. they're that they're that yeah. close together, and you know, just uh, just really enjoying each other's company. Yeah. That's so interesting how that happens. So I'm seeing a bunch of cat trees and um, a bunch of litter boxes. Um, these are wonderful things for anybody who's looking for an alternative to your small regular uh, litter boxes. I was told about these many, many years ago. They're actually made for mixing cement. Okay. And you can get them at Home Depot. And they're so smooth on the inside. They're very, very easily scoop to uh, 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 scoop, scoop in them. Very easy to uh, clean them. They're huge. They're deep. So it keeps the majority of the litter inside the box. Great. Okay. Yeah. So they're cement mixing uh, containers. Yes. From what they told me uh, at Home Depot and the guy uh, at Pet Value years ago, uh, told me about them. He said they're actually terrible for what they're made for because they're not strong enough really for mixing cement, but they make wonderful litter boxes and, and they do, they do. And my <laughs> guess is that they're probably less expensive than what we pay at the pet store. Yes, I haven't bought one in quite a while, but last, I think they were maybe like eight bucks. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Once you put a um, something that, indicates it's for a pet, they just automatically jack up the price because they know we'll pay it. Um, they know we'll pay it. It's more of a, a luxury than at that yes. point. Yep, yep, yep. So this is the room that they can go into when they want to come in from outside. Is that right? Uh, this is one of the rooms, yeah. Okay, yeah. do you want to show us uh, the other rooms? Yep, yep. So I've just given a quick span here. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. You know, just some cat trees, and you know, th this item right here was from a pet sitting client of mine. Her cats did not use it. She said, "Would you like it?" I was like, "Absolutely, thank you." So, and do they um, like it? Yes, they do. Yes, yes. Uh, that's just one of the areas where I have stored litter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. This is. Whenever I look at this, I don't know why I think of Hannibal Lecter. Oh in, yes, in absolutely. Of but this is Hank. Okay. Uh, I guess you can see him. He, I can. He doesn't get along real well with everybody, uh, especially the females. He picks on them, and I took him in for his shots just several months ago. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try him again. I'll let him loose uh, because you know this thing is. They can smell each other, you know. Uh, they, can, you know, the the other cats can be right up near him, but there's just no fighting that can really occur. And within two days, I heard fighting going on downstairs. I came down, and he was involved. So he just doesn't. So I believe um, it's going to be very difficult for me. But I believe come the spring, a lady friend of mine who also does trap to release. There's a place in Maryland. There's acres upon acres upon acres, no roads, barns they can live in, you know, and uh, it, it, it is also a nonprofit. Um, and I'm thinking I might take him there because at least he'll have room to roam. He'll be yeah. safe, you know, taken care of. But this, for right now, this works, but this is, is no way for a, a kitty to, you know, live his life. So. And it's it's interesting to me, Kel, that he's sitting at the front of that um, 
enclosure. And does that mean he, he would like to interact with you? What happens when you get close to him? Well, he's not actually at the front. He's actually, he's actually at the back. Oh, all right. Then I'm seeing something that looks like a cat. Okay. But that's not him. All right. Now I see him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've tried petting him and it's really sad. He, it's almost like he doesn't know what to do. He, he's not aggressive, but if I try to pet him, he swats at me. And a few times I offered my arm, my, my like elbow, just to see what he'd do, you know, you know, you know, when I'm wearing clothes and he like swats at it. it it's really sad. Um, I, I think he'd like to, to warm up, um, Somebody had this guy because when I first trapped him, I didn't even know that he was out there. I was trying to trap a different cat and I wound up trapping him. And when I took him in to be uh, spayed or neutered, he was already neutered. Um, okay. And his ear was not tipped. And that's usually, a, uh, usually if you're doing, doing trap neuter release, uh, when they do the surgery to spay or neuter them, they also I uh, tip off one of their ears so that way other people know that cat has been fixed and that cat is, is living outside, you know, and he, so his ear is not tipped um, and he was already neutered. So I don't know if somebody unfortunately like, like abandoned him and like, you know, who kicked him out, you know, or what, I, I'm not sure what happened. Very right. sad. Yeah. Well, and, and thank you. I think I, I knew about the uh, clipping of the ear, which sounds barbaric, but it's little, you know, a tiny little piece off so that people like you or, or anybody else who's in that um, uh, activity of, of uh, trapping and neutering and then releasing knows this, this cat has already been taken care of. Um, Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So now we're going to... We're going to go outside. They're going to go bonkers, but that's all right because they know something's up. But uh, hopefully the, uh, the signal stays with us. I'm going to okay. open the door. Now, normally that, that uh, doggy door, I guess they're called doggy doors, that's what they use to go in and out. Right. But I'm going to open up the, you know, the actual door. And this is the outside patio or whatever you want to call wow. it. I call it their playground. Wow. Um, that is Brownie right there. He came from a lady friend of mine, a different lady friend who, uh, who, uh, who does some trapping. He was, he's from Lancaster. Okay. Um, Look at so this. This, is, this is just beautiful, Kel. Wow. Uh, that is hope. She was in that first group of five along with Joy. Joy was the very first one that I trapped. She right. was maybe the like second or third. Okay. The one that you maybe saw the gray guy, that is Bear. He is still uh, feral. Uh, I've had him for several years and he's, he's just a kitty. You're just never gonna, he's never gonna warm up to you. And that's okay. Um, uh, actually a pretty... Um, neat story with him um and so let me just out so they can go way up high if they want yes that kitty's like going up that is smoky up there <laughs> it's hard to see them but i think we're getting the idea of what this yep. cattery looks okay. like and it's it's so beautiful and they get to look outside i'm sure they see all kinds of movement with birds and insects when it's summer it's lovely thank you susan yeah they do like it out there yes you know i just say there's plenty of birds they can see squirrels unfortunately every once in a while they get a squirrel i don't know how they do it but somehow if the squirrel comes close enough you, hey you know these guys were feral living outside and they know how to hunt and somehow they'll get a squirrel it, it, Maybe like once every two years, I hear a lot of commotion and I'll come down and I'll see somebody got a squirrel. Huh. Um, Do you think yeah. the squirrel goes underneath the, um, and gets into the enclosure? Nope. I think they pull them in. They have to pull them in. Wow. I don't, I don't know how they do it because the wire fencing is not very large. 
I don't know how they do it. It's I I've never I've never witnessed it personally when they actually bring the scroll inside. But every now and then, a scroll will will come up on the deck, and I just think to myself, "You're I wish you wouldn't do that. You're really messing." And like I say, normally it's no problem, but every yes. now and then, I guess as the scroll is going down the side of their enclosure. If one of the cats is quick enough, they 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 grab the squirrel and and that's it. That's it. <laughs> well, all things considered, you've got a bunch of feral or semi-feral cats down there, and they would be doing a lot more of that hunting with chipmunks and birds and mice. So um, yes, it's it's unfortunate, but all things considered, much better than what it could be. Okay, now what are we looking at? All right, now we're going back up the stairs. Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording while we go upstairs. Okay, now we're recording again. Okay. We're going into the one bedroom. These guys upstairs are all a little bit more um, uh, friendly. Uh, okay. Some of these guys would make wonderful pets. I've tried finding homes for some of them. It just, it's so difficult because there's just so many cats that need homes. Yes. This is Duke. All right, let's hey, see. Duke. I can't quite, oh, hi, Duke. Hi. <laughs> That's okay. Duke. Behind him is Boots. Is that like underneath the cat tree? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, she's, she's nervous. It's all right, okay. girl. Yeah, it's Boots. Duke has always been one of the most friendly guys. He's just, he was living outside too, but he's, uh, hey buddy. Yeah. So this so, is one of the bedrooms. What's that, Susan? How, how do you decide who goes upstairs and who stays downstairs? I kind of just uh, let myself be guided by the universe, by Lori, by whatever. Um, it just whatever it comes to do came up here because and at times he still struggles with it. Um, he was having some type of skin reaction and I thought maybe it was something in the basement. Uh, so I brought him up here and he was always one of the friendlier guys when I say friendlier um, where really wants to be touched and, and stroked and held and loved, you know, you know, things like that. So I brought him up here to get him out of the basement boots was being picked on down there. Um, I don't know how they determine which ones they don't care for, whatever, but she was being picked on by more than one, one of the other residents down there. So I brought her upstairs into one of the other bedrooms. Well, the, the other bedroom will be going in, in here shortly. She was in turn picking on one of the females over there. So I brought her in here with Duke because I know Duke is very, very docile. So these two get along great. Great. Very, so very it's well. just the two of them in that bedroom. In this bedroom, yes. yes. Okay. Yep. And, yep. Yep. And I forgot to ask you, how many do you have downstairs? Uh, counting Hank in the, you know, that's by himself, uh, thirteen. Okay. So, and you have thirteen downstairs or thirteen all together? Thir no, no, thirteen downstairs. Wow. Okay. And then, so you've got two up here, so that's fifteen. And now we're going to go into the next bedroom. Yep, yep. All right. All right, Duke. We'll see you, buddy. <laughs> it might be dark just for a second, but all right. Okay, we're in the other bedroom. And this is where I call, usually call it. Yep, yeah, they know something's up. So two are hiding. Um, okay. There are three. I always call this, uh, you know, where. The, the, the queens are at and I've heard stories where a lot of uh, female kitties do not like each other they just rather would, would be by themselves you know uh, I heard you know in that usually the females in the cat um, in the cat world are the bosses but these three get along great this is Smokey hi Smokey hi sweetheart <laughs> When I first trapped her, she was missing part of her right front paw. But we, hey, hey girl, but we had it checked. So she, she's not, it's fine. It, it healed, 
it, it healed fine when she was still living outside. She does have uh, not not pleural coma. She has cataracts in her left eye, so she's basically blind in her left eye. But it's not it's not uh, it's not protruding. So my vet told me it's not pleural coma. So we're good. Mm -hmm. um, she's doing wonderfully. Uh, when I first trapped her and I took her to the vets, she literally was at Pharaoh. She jumped on the walls. She tried climbing the walls. I mean, she went nuts. And yes. now she's just a big love bug. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And now yeah. you, what did you call this room again? I, I couldn't quite make it out when you said. Oh, I just say this is where the queens are at because the this queens. Be, yeah, queens. Because this is okay. where the, the females tend to go. That Smokey was also being picked on downstairs. Okay. Um, so, so she came up here. Precious, um, who I, I uh, yeah, she, she's, she's still a uh, people. She's very timid, but she's one big love bug with me. But she's, I've, I've over time, you know, earned her trust. So she's hiding. And there's one in here that is precious. Yep. Hey, girl, that, that's precious. Okay. Um, and um, I, I'm guessing um, Lucky, who came from Lancaster, along with who I mentioned downstairs with uh, Brownie, Lucky is probably hiding. She's still, I can get near her. And when the food's coming, she'll, she'll rub my legs in that. Yeah. And I can, you know, touch her briefly, but she's still very nervous. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's the queen's room. Well, that's where my Priscilla would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's a queen. Um, yep. Absolutely. And then I think you have one more space to show us, right? Yep. Okay. So now we're up to three, five, 13 down there is 18. All right. Yep, and this is 19. This is this is Gorm. Now, what's his name? Garm. Barn. Okay. G-A-R-M. Garn. Oh, Garn. Okay. Garn. And uh, Garn is clearly segregated the way that Henry is segregated, uh, or Hank. What's the story Hank. with him? Um. Well, he is. He's kind of a. Let, let me just start off by saying this is probably the most affectionate, uh, lovable cat probably I've ever really experienced. This cat wants to, I mean, you, you wouldn't know it right now because he, he knows something's up. I'm holding this, 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 this black thing, which obviously he doesn't know what it is. So he's, he's nervous right now. But yes, when I come up here, he, I have trouble scooping his litter box. He, he wants attention all the time. And when I first trapped him, he lashed out at me. He would spit and carry on. He peed twice on the spot. He was that that scared and petrified. Right. So he's done a total 360. Wow. Um, wow. But um, he's by himself because, again, in the basement, for years he was fine. And then for whatever reason, I heard a lot of scrapping, yelling going on downstairs. And every time I went down, he was involved and his ears were back and I could tell he was extremely scared. I, so it, I, I felt he was being picked on also. So I brought him up here and I've tried twice. I tried slowly incorporating him into with the Queens and the one that you didn't see, um, uh, Lucky, Lucky yeah. right away started licking his forehead. They were fine. The other two, for whatever reason, were nervous of him. Even after I tried several times, I thought, all right, that's not going to work. I tried taking him over in with Boots and Duke. He's fine with Duke. For whatever reason, Boots is nervous of him. And it seems when they get nervous of him, he senses that and he picks up on it. And he and he reacts and it just yeah. makes it worse. Yeah. So for right now, unfortunately, it's not the best, but he's doing well. Um, I, I wish I could have him in one of the bedrooms, but for right now, you know, this is the best it is. So and, and how long has he been in the in the bathroom segregated? Um 
uh, maybe about a year or so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he has a window. He has a factory. He has his litter box. Yeah. He gets, you know, fil everybody gets filtered, uh, fresh water. I filter everybody's water, my water, the dog's water, Chance, who I'll show briefly then, the bird, Isaac, all the kitties, everybody gets filtered with water. So he's doing well. Um, but I just wish, I, I tried finding him actually a home. He would make somebody a wonderful pet. And a lady on Facebook, uh, she's in a process that's of starting a nonprofit uh, specifically for that, finding homes for mm -hmm. cats. And even right before the holiday, she asked me a question about him. She was trying to find him a home. And again, it, it's just so difficult. It's yes. so difficult. Yes. So I, I, it occurs to me that we have not met Chance or Isaac. Are they easy to meet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. all right, we'll see you, buddy. All right, we're going back downstairs. All right, and I'll pause the recording while you're on your way down. Okay, go to Isaac. Okay. I don't think I knew about Isaac. Yeah, you did, remember? You met him. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. okay, yes. That's Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Okay. I... I, uh, Susan, if you recall, you and I spoke about it a little bit. I, I carry a lot of uh, guilt, uh, a, ver uh, a lot of, uh, of emotional stuff surrounding Isaac because I bought him from a breeder. The, I think the first, yeah, the first and absolutely without question, the last animal I will ever purchase from a breeder, but that was, that was over 30 years ago, long before veganism was ever even even a, a blip on the radar screen. Yes. And now, I mean, I just feel I make the most of it for him, but he, he belongs in Brazil, where he's from, yeah. flying free, mating, enjoying yes. life. And unfortunately, you know, when I, until we know better, you know, we, we can't do better. I, I totally understand. Okay, now we're going to meet. This is Chance. Hi. This is Hi, the guy. Chance. This is the guy Lori and I were walking. Yep. He, he's, the only, he's the only guy that we adopted as a couple. Mm. And yep. So he's getting older. Yeah, he, he's 11. Yeah. Yeah, that's Chance. Aww. Hi, Chance. Hi, yeah. Chance. <laughs> Aww. So why don't you get settled in uh, where you can sit? And I just want to say a few things before we end, okay? And okay. I'm going to pause the recording. No, uh, Go ahead. All right. It wouldn't be complete without letting everybody know a picture of, you know, meeting Lori a little bit. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Wow. And yeah. yeah. Um, so while you're walking back into the kitchen, um, for those of you who did not listen to the first segment of Upstairs, Downstairs, Lori was um, Kel's fiance who was tragically um, hit by a car while she was walking Chance. And um, it was partially through that that uh, all of this began, the sanctuary. So thank you for showing us that picture. Thank you. Mm. And I, I had to, when you were taking us around and showing us the different cats, and it was a little hard to see because it's dark, but that doesn't matter. What really struck me was what a great parent you are. What a great father you are. You pay attention to these little nuances and you decide, okay, this guy's got to be alone. This one's being picked on. This one is starting to be frightened. And you create these little dyads and triads and those who have to be alone until you can find um, homes for them. And I just think how fortunate they are, how fortunate they are to uh, have somebody like you. So um, I'm grateful to know you. I'm grateful to know your story. 
And I, I so appreciate you bringing us into your home. And I'm thinking you truly have turned your home into a sanctuary. <laughs> and I hope that means that you derive some peace from living in this sanctuary where you give so much love and care to these creatures. Uh, and I totally get that feeling of guilt about Isaac. Um, yeah, that's that's got to be hard for your heart. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And before we end, is there anything else that you would like to um, say about the sanctuary, about your pet sitting um, uh, business, which is, I imagine, how you support to some extent your sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I guess the only thing that I would just, oh, I, I just wanted to share the story a little bit with Bear. That's right. I wanted to get um, uh, a really special story. Um, uh, several years ago, because he was not warming up at all. I mean, at all. And uh, I, like when I'm going down with food, even today, I mean, three times a day, when I go down with food, he's hissing and carrying on. I mean, he's, he's still extremely feral. And a couple of years ago, I thought, you know what, uh, Bear, you know, I tried, if you're not happy here, you know, maybe you'll be happy free, you know, you know, so, um, so I thought I'm going to, I'll let it up to him, you know, let him decide. And so I got everybody in that first room in the basement. I closed the door. I opened up the door in the patio to the outside and I left that door wide open and I had him in there by himself. And I said, you know, there you go, buddy. You know, if you want to be free, you know, because it doesn't seem like you're like you're happy here. Mm -hmm. And so um, I went down like 50 minutes later, and he was outside, but still in my yard, but he was outside several feet away from the door. Mm -hmm. And I left and I went down like half an hour later, and he was in the neighbor's yard. He was gone. He was he was leaving. He was gone. And I thought, well, and I mean, I actually I actually share some tears. I mean, because you know, when I get when I bring these guys in, I don't I don't abandon these guys. That's just it, that just isn't something I do. And um, so this was not easy for me, but I wanted what what's best for him. And um, when I went down several hours later for feeding. Guess who was back in up on one of the the shelves up top, you know, waiting for waiting waiting for dinner. So even though he, what I, um, I I guess what these guys bring me a lot of joy mm -hmm. and a lot of happiness, but I I'm not doing that. That's not my main reason for doing this. My main reason is to help them. And if he wants to live here and not be touched or not be whatever, that's fine. You know, you know that 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 that's that's totally okay. And um, and he he has a, a home here. However, he you know yes. However, he is. So he he obviously is is comfortable enough here. You know, to come back. And um, oh, but so so that that really made my heart happy that even though he's still very feral that he still returned so that was that was nice yes and he clearly feels safe yes yes even yes. if he's feral and again what strikes me Kel uh, and which is the reason I wanted to do this interview with you in talking to you over the years. I, I hear how you talk about these, these animals, the cats and Isaac and, and Chance. And like you said, I get a lot of joy from doing this, I Kel, but it's really that I want to give a good life, as good a life as possible to these creatures. And that you're not asking anything of them. Correct. 
Correct. You right. are exactly. saying, yes. Yes. What, what can I give you? And that's what you do. Right. And you give them right. whatever room they need, um, literally and figuratively, you give them the room they need, um, whether it's the queen's room or whether it's the bathroom by, by himself or it's right. the, the um, uh, cage downstairs for Hank who needs to be alone. Is it Hank? Do I have that right? Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hank. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. and um, so just, you know, kudos to you for what you've done. And I'm hoping that people who get to see this part two and see what you've done and how you are with these animals will think about, um, and this wasn't done as a fundraising um, endeavor, but I do hope that people might watch this and say, hey, taking care of, I think it's 20 animals. Is it 20? Uh, all of them uh, combined is 21. 21, that's right. With Chance and Isaac, it goes to 21. That's got to be yeah. quite costly. So um, I, for one, am very grateful you made the time. But I'm also, more than that, just grateful for your heart and what you've done and the energy that you uh, put into taking care of them and making sure that they have good lives. So. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kel. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye now.